All right, I'm Drake on, and this is uh, we talk about Toji next. So this book is from the author Tokyo Ghoul, Tokyo Ghoulery. Um, his new series picked it up at Barnes and Nobles. Volume one's out. You can pre-order volume two on Barnes and Noble website. Um, so I'm gonna read the summary real quick, and then I'm gonna get right into how it started and then my thoughts on it. Best friends Tokyo and Asuma do everything together. Even if most of the time it feels like Tokyo is just stumbling along and Asuma is cooler, more talented footsteps. But when they're attacked one night by a superhuman mutant called a Chojin, Tokyo finally has a chance to shine by turning into a Chojin himself. And then from the creator of Tokyo Ghoul, Chojin X, being a superhero, super powered creature isn't all it's cracked up to be though. Tokyo has to hide his transformation from his family and dodge a truancy charge at school, all while dealing with the increasingly odd incidents happening around town. Okay, so I read this already. Obviously, can't do a review without reading something. Volume 1, you know, it's the, the introduction, basically. You get introduced to the main characters. You get Tokyo, which, um, like a lot of you, doesn't know what he wants to do with his life. Um, he just kind of following around in his best friend's footsteps. Um, they go to the, he gets called a buzzard compared to his, his best friend who is seen as the lion because he's a town hero, you could say. He protects the, the innocent, the weak, and then Tokyo kind of just follows him around. And, and then that's okay because when you're kids, that's what happens. But as you grow up, you can't do that anymore. And, um... Tokyo and Azuma really figure that out. They get in a few, they get in a, a scuffle with a, a bad guy. That's how all of it really starts after they're at school, getting a little scuffle, right? And in the introduction, you get this nice little, this nice little thing where they introduce you to this this character right here. Don't remember her name. I didn't care enough to. Um, and they introduce you to your first children. This girl actually does end up becoming important, I'm pretty sure. I, again, only read volume one. And the art is absolutely beautiful. It's, it's sick. Like, boom. They end up introducing the first Chojin. I'm pretty sure he's the smoke Chojin or fire Chojin. And um, you get to see the little girl more towards the end. They get in a little fight. After the fight, he Azuma ends up breaking the the villain's arms, which the art on that is pretty cool too. If I can find it for you, the art on that is pretty cool. You get to see his bones break, pop out his arm. It's insane, you know, as expected. Eventually, he comes back. A villain, no idea who he is yet, he isn't really introduced properly. I'm pretty sure it's meant to be vague, though. Um, comes back, gives the guy Chojin powers. The guy ends up getting three syringes. And he becomes a Chojin. And then Tokyo and Azuma get one, too. Tokyo is the only one who has... He ends up getting beastification powers. Which is... There's different kinds of Chojins. Some of them are a beast. Some of them are, like... You get the smoke choji, you get plants. It's it's really just based off of whatever really is going on around, you know? Uh, it's like the super gene, super X gene or something like that. I remember reading in the, the back part, they kind of tell you about it more. And they do that. Tokyo, like it says, he couldn't, he ends up not being able to control his children's powers after their little fight, which they end up winning. And he has to go home and he can't go to school. He doesn't go to school for about three days. He says he has a fever. You can get out of school for having a fever. Just just for a little bit though. You can't get out of it for too long. And then after that, um Ozuma and him get in a fight. And Ozuma's saying he needs to learn how to think for himself. And Tokyo does learn how to do that. He's weak. He has no determination. He's um, honestly just a follower. That's why um, 
when he was a kid, they called him a bugger, Kurt, because that's what they do. But they, as he knows, they are the highest flying birds. And I'm pretty sure that'll probably come more into play eventually. But, um, the second chapter of the vlogging, we get more of the little girl. I think she's dead. Don't know how she's not dead, right? Little farm girl. They introduced her in the, in the beginning. Um, the smoke... The smoke children is chasing her. No idea why. They, um, it's it's very humorous. They are on, like, a little tight scooter, basically. Uh, what did they call it? A roller boy year year. Don't know what that is. Probably something. And, um, she throws herself off the bridge. She, um, ends up getting chased by, like, these weird sheep head guys. Don't, don't know why. Um, and then... There's this cool chase scene. She ends up driving a tractor because she knows how to drive a tractor because she's from the country and all this other cool stuff. It's, it's actually really cool. The art's really fantastic. Um, you get really all these like big spread panels like that, you see? And really just nice overall. And turns out, you see, look at that. Uh, a tractor and uh, sheep heads on motorcycles and mopeds in the city. Who would have thought? Um, yeah, eventually she's saved by um, this guy. And after she figures out she has choking powers because the smoke guy is chasing her. Very weird. You get Ozma in the shower. This is this is what I'm talking about. The spread panel. He's stuck as a buzzard. He can't change his face. So he has to stay inside and avoid school and stuff of that nature. He has to figure out like how to live like a human being again. And it's very Tokyo ghoul in nature having to figure out how to live. But it does I'm not sure if it'll last very long because he'll probably like other children don't seem their, like their powers are always out in the open, so he'll probably just turn right back into a human, honestly. You get the introduction of, he goes to the zoo, to, because he figures out he can talk to birds, he was talking to pigeons, which they give him a little pep talk, pigeon pep talk, I think it's good. He's going to talk to the buzzard to see if he gets some advice from the buzzard. Um, and he ends up meeting this girl, Batty, 10 out of 10, good lord. Uh, favorite animal is a snake. I got a pet snake. And she's... He doesn't really notice because our main character, he's a little slow. He doesn't notice. She ends up talking to snakes, right? Doesn't notice her jacket texture is very reminiscent of scales. Not a very... It's a very telltale sign, right? She literally whispers to the snake. And then he, she says the snake told him. And he can talk to birds and he doesn't even think about it. The buzzard doesn't even, it literally ignores him when he tries to talk to him. It's crazy. So our main character's kind of dumb. Um, we get this cool little panel right here showing how bad she is. You see him, her talking to the, um, the villain who gave the syringes earlier. And saying they need to make use of him or test him. If, see how useful he is. She gets a cool little transformation sequence where she turns into a snake. She gives him three strikes. Test them. She shows a little bit of her powers right there. It's pretty cool. I would say it's pretty cool. And um, eventually, this girl, she, the girl, little girl, she shows up again. There's no reason for her to. Other than now, uh, because she can. That's what I was saying. Got a phone call. This pedal, pretty cool. You see. Really, overall, the art is really just nice. You get to see the, the you can see what the characters really represent just with the colors that is being used, like, and the 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 textures and the patterns, the snake patterns. You get the darkness and the smoke. It's really, it's really cool. Hmm, little main character, Tokyo, he's in the middle. Um, they have to team up and fight the snake lady. After she uses her beastification form, which I guess every children can do, they have, well, not the beast children, obviously. They have little power ups and stuff. And Smoke Girl ends up using her little smoke skis. Pisses off the, pisses off the lady. 
and he becomes a big snake with human teeth. Don't know why she has super teeth. Pretty fucking cool. Um, they're fighting her, and then our main character finally, um, he has one of those moments where somebody else tells him to run, and he has to buck up and be a man and do his shit, and this is how his first volume ends. It's him coming, using his decification form. Get some little notes in the back, get to meet the, the guy who saved her and trained her. Guy has a fucking big ass chin, and that's with it. Sexy man. Um, I love how the character sheets are in the back. They show like they have stats and everything. Like it's freaking crazy. The main character has one. They explain how the Cho genes and the super gene works. And then that's the end of volume one. So overall, pretty good start to a story. Um, white volume does need it to be easy, easy to get dirty, you see, so you do have to be kind of careful with it, other than, but you read it one time, put it on the shelf, every once in a while, take it off, wipe it off, do a little rag, wet rag, it'll be good, but that was my review of Chojin X, I liked it, I could, I'd say I'm looking forward to reading, um, volume two, I, I pre-ordered it already, it's on the way, um, whenever it comes out. And, um, I'll continue reading it as it comes out. Um, thanks for watching the video. Got this far, um, that's cool. Should've gone out.